Hey, it's Leroy from Rack and Roll. Today we're going to put together one of our uh, double e-bike carriers. If you get a single, most of this stuff's the same, but uh, today we're doing a double. So uh, this is your main bar. I guess if you're going to build it in your tow bar, it's a pretty easy place. Slide that in. Then uh, your bike channels. So there's two bike channels. Start obviously the one with the stickers for the outside. But uh, how we normally uh, assemble this rack is that the um, inside bike faces the passenger side and the outside bike faces the driver's side. You tell which end's which. The end with the three holes, that's for the what we call the nose cone that stops the front tire. Uh, End with the two holes, that's the loading end because that's where your loading ramp's going to lock into. So uh, these just sit on the bracket, line up the holes. The bolts come in packets, they've written on them what's what. But uh, these are your, uh, are they M10 by 25s? We put uh, washers and nylocks, a washer each side and nylock, so. Um, they just drop straight in. Washer and nylock underneath. There's two bolts there and one on the side here. Same washer, washer nut. channel the sticker will be facing out so you don't have to think too much on that one same deal bolts drop in nut and washers Keep this short, I'll just put a couple on. Then we do the um, nose cone, piece that stops the front tire. That's what we call the nose cone. So these bags will be separated. One of the bags obviously needs six bolts, it's three holes each side. One bag has five, the other bag has six. So the bag with five is for the outside because we use, um, one of the light bracket bolts for the um, sixth bolt. Let's put a few on, but same washer each side, nylon nut. get the idea. So, do the inside. It's down this Washes each side, nylock nut. Pretty simple, six in that end. As you tighten these, just hold it up straight. It's a little bit of clearance in the hole, that's why it falls forward. Hold it up straight. So, uh, next up, we'll do the um, tie down bars. So, uh, see, one tie down bar is bent, so that goes to the outside. We just do that to um, give you better ground clearance coming in our driveways. So there's a, another bag has your tight end bar mount, mounting bolts. That's uh, these babies. They're probably M10 by 70s. Same not, washer and um, each side and nylon nuts. So just drop 
paper through the another tip is when you put the bike channels on don't tighten anything up until you get the tight end bars on so that gives you a bit of room to juggle everything around if you need to that's um underneath spin those on then the straight tight end bar is for the inside so on this baby you've got uh, a couple of you know holes on both faces so the bike channels are 300 apart, center to center. So just work out which, that's your holes you're gonna use, but it needs to face inwards. Because uh, why it does that, when the bike's on, you're gonna use this point and this point here, we've got eye nuts to go on next to where you secure the bike. So that's why that faces inwards towards the car. put the uh, eye nuts on this is how you secure the bike they're in their own bag two three four same deal uh, I normally face these they just have a spring washer a washer another washer eye nut Put them on facing the bike, so it's there and there. And uh, this side, same deal. When you tighten these, just tighten them well, whatever way you want to. I normally put them vertically, makes them pretty easy to hook a strap onto. And finish off here, the tight end bars have their own end caps. You just push those in, that's one each side, here and here. And we've got uh, the main bar has its own eye nuts as well. So on here, I put the eye nuts so it's facing the front tire of the bike. That way, if you strap off the frame, it's going to pull the bike forward into the nose cone. Back bike, same. Put the nose cone facing the front tyre. Just go through this quickly. So when you're on the inside bike, you can strap off the frame or the seat post each side. So on the inside bike, you're gonna strap down onto here and onto here. So that gives you a bit of spread. There's two points there you can hook to. They'll come up to the inside bike. On the outside bike, you're gonna tie off here and here. One of these. And then you pull the bike down mainly on the frame in the center. You've only got to pull it down 10 mil. The bike will be rock solid. Then you can put a secondary set of straps up front, just off the bars or the forks and Obviously, the inside bike, you're here and here. The outside bike, you're here and here. The fork ones, you don't really need to yank them down. They're just as a backup. Uh, 
uh, main bar has its notch of V in that, so it'll just go around the bolt. Tap that in. Uh, what's next? Light kit. So, uh, got these M8 by 50 set screws. They'll come put together like that. They have two washers. A, um, so basically, pretty simple stuff. This will make the last bolt in the front nose cone. Nut goes in from the back with one washer. Washer on the front, spring washer, and the nut. So show you how this goes. I will tighten this up. So just get your nose clean straight. Give that a decent nip. Then uh, in another bag there'll be four washers, four nylocks. So we just get a nylock. We'll wind this on. 15, 20 mil. room to put another washer then with the light brackets there's two sizes there's a smaller one a large one the large one goes on the front tire side because uh, this is where you put your accessory number plate so we sit the bracket on another washer and the nylon and we'll tighten that up Same, just get it straight. Give that a nip. And with the same down this end. So we got uh, pull apart your little assembly there. You're gonna have a uh, bolt washer, washer, spring washer, standard nut. Enough thread, washer, bracket. Put the bracket on so it folds out away from the rack, give it some room. So and get it straight and just nip that. So there the LED brackets on. We got to put the uh, lights on. These look underneath them. One has a number plate light, one doesn't. So the number plate light goes on the front tire side on the bigger bracket. When you tighten these, just give them a nip. They're just, the bolts are only set in plastic, so if you tighten them too much, you're gonna snap up the back out of the light. The 
the blinkers go to the top. There's two sets of bounce holes because we use uh, different lights for the US. Lights on. And we have these chassis ties. So uh, what I do is get the where the lights join and uh, what do we do here? We start at the top, down through the hole, around the cable. Give yourself, a, don't pull it completely tight. Start at the V. Then uh, put that on either side. Give those a nip. I'm going to start working my way out, pulling the cable tight as you go. Get it up there, hold it with your thumb, put a finger on the back of the tab there, pull that up. Pull it tight, thumb, finger, pull that. We use this light kit on a lot of different racks that are different lengths, overall lengths, so you're going to end up with a bit of spare cable. But you just tuck it behind the light there, it won't give you any grief. It sits there like that. Won't bother about doing this end, but it's the same thing. Zip tie it, pull it as you go. It's a bit of spare cable, just tuck it in behind the light. Just sit there like that. Then with these, you can just uh, get some um, side cutters and cut them down flush. Next we'll do the loading ramp, if you get the ramp. So the ramp's made up of uh, a few things. But this is what we call the ramp storage bracket. This is the loading ramp. So, bracket comes with a uh, bolt bolted on. The lip of the bracket faces the bike channel. Sits like so. So we put some tape between this so you'll know what to do, but there's a small washer, large washer through the bottom. Bracket on, large, small spring washer and a nut. Tighten that up. All that's to do, why we pack it, is so that the nut ends up the same height as this lip here. That's what the ramp's gonna sit on. Tighten that. With your ramp, we face, these are the tabs that lock into the end of the bike channel. This cup head bolt does a couple of jobs, but it, uh, when you go to load the bike, you can just put the cup head through there. You don't need to pin it, or you can pin it if you want. Load the bike. When you finish loading the bike, bring the ramp. The tabs face the front tire of the bike. Sits on. We use this eye nut to hold the ramp on. Then you'll use this bolt as a breaker bar and you just put it in there, give it a nip. When you go to loosen it, just hit it with your hand, otherwise you'll take your knuckles off. Nip that. And then this bolt can just live in the back of the channel here. Pin in, so that's always there. Then this strap just drops through the two slots. The strap, you've got to feed it in from the back of the buckle.
easier this way, come up from underneath. Go through the buckle, out the front. Got a special strap here. Anyway, nip that down. Next up is the, um, we call this our anti-tilt bracket. So uh, these shims, we supply four shims. There's two different um, thicknesses. So the ones with the slot, they're obviously for your hitch pin to go through. So you can sort of, uh, you need to pull the rack out slightly feed whatever thickness you're going to put into the receiver it's one for the side and uh sometimes you can lift the outside of the rack and thumb one on the top pick what thickness you're going to use not all cars can use these some cars may take one some may take two some will take none so uh that's that and this bracket which we call our anti tilt bracket the welded tab has to push on the bike rack. The open face sits over the side of your receiver. If the side of your receiver has a, a um, plastic cover, say a Nissan or Toyota or Ford or something, you've got to rip or it's chrome, just rip that off. You'll be left with a ring, a reinforcing ring around the receiver. So the, the bike, the tab presses on the bike rack. The open end slides over the side of your receiver and uh, tighten it up. As a, uh, rarely we encounter where the receiver's a bit, the pinhole's a bit further back in the receiver than standard. What you can do if you get stuck is put the bolt through from that side with no washer. So it'll end up pushing up hard on the receiver face and then uh, put your uh, plate on, washer and nylock from that side. But uh, I think that's it.